Hello guys, it's Larcher from 7string.org. Uh, I've been seeing lately in the recording section that a lot of new people were wondering how uh, to import your guitar profile drum tracks into your digital audio workstation. Most of the time it's Reaper because Reaper is kind of free. Uh, but uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to import your drum tracks in Reaper and Cubase 5. So we'll just get started here with Reaper first. Uh, what you want to do is first go to Insert in Reaper, then Media File. And here you want to choose the MIDI file that you exported your Guitar Pro file in. Um, how you do that in Guitar Pro is you have your Guitar Pro file, your song, opened in Guitar Pro. And you're going to hit File, then Export, then choose MIDI. And then it's going to make a file called .mid, which is MIDI. And then you can import it in uh, your digital audio workstation. So uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to open this MIDI file here. And here it's going to ask you uh, expand four source tracks, merge uh, uh, tempo map. You want to have these two check. You click OK. That's going to this message is going to pop. OK again once and again. Okay. Now here, what you're going to do? Like I think you should put your drum tracks at the end because you're going to have all of your drum tracks open up at once, just so it's easier to just sort out. You know where your drums are and stuff. So what you want to do here, uh, once your whole MIDI file is imported you're going to click on FX on your drum tracks, this little button right here. And then here you're going to go to VSTi and choose your drum software. I use Superior Drummer 2. And you're going to click OK. Now this is going to appear and you're going to go to Mixer and here on the line where it says Output you're going to right click and choose Multi-Channel. This is going to send all of your uh, kit parts into independent tracks so you can mix them uh, outside of the mixer. That's how I do it because uh, I suck at mixing inside the mixer. Uh, also the the one thing that is uh, not fun about the method I use for my drums is that your all of your five toms on your kit once you send them to the to the tracks outside of the mixer they all be they all come in one track, just the toms. So you can't independently mix each tom on your kit. So that's best to mix it inside the mixer here, like where you have rack tom RT1, RT2, RT3, FT1, FT2. This is rack tom 1, 2, 3, floor tom 1 and 2. Uh, in Guitar Pro, these, uh, these values would be 48, 47, 45, 43, 41. And here you've got like the uh, snare drum for SD and kick drum for KD and OH for overhead. Anyways, now that you know this, we're gonna just you know put everything out to multi-channel, and then you close this, and then right-click here where it says in your FX chains list, uh, Spirit Drummer 2. You're gonna right-click and then select Build Multi-Channel Routing for Output of Selected Effects. Once you click that, this tra uh, this window is going to appear. Select yes. Now, what's going to happen here is that uh, most of your, or I mean, all of your kit is in independent tracks. Uh, I'm just going to hit play so you can hear what it sounds like. All right, and also here, uh, the best thing to do I find to uh, just not get lost when you mix and stuff is rename your tracks to their selective kit parts. First one is kick, second one is snare, third one is snare room or something like that. After that it's hi-hat, toms, this one is overhead one, and nine is overhead two. The other tracks that uh, don't emit any volume, you can delete them because you won't be using them and it's just clutter for nothing so you just delete them and there you go, it's all nice and pretty. Also, I find that uh, the default Superior Drummer 2 kit with uh, no editing or whatever doesn't sound that great so what I do for my kick and my snare is I trigger them with a program called Drumagog 5 and what this does is that it emulates 
the sound of a sample that you choose to load into Drumagog. So I'll show you how this works. Here I choose my Drumagog, click OK. Now I'm doing this for the kick track, so I'm going to go in my Steven Slate sample library. I'm going to choose this kick because I find it sounds the best. And then this is the difference, sounds much better. And for the snare, I use some Paramore snare that I found on the internet somewhere. I think it sounds not that great when it's not edited, uh, when it's not mixed or whatever, but uh, I think it sounds good when you can just play around with it. So yeah, that's how you import your drums in uh, Reaper. And I also want to say that uh, you, when I record, I've been doing this ever since I started recording, is I I put a VST that's called DVS Guitars on my guitar so that when I record I can hear my Guitar Pro guitar tracks or whatever, like when I tabbed in Guitar Pro I'll hear it while I record so that it's, you don't just listen to the drum, you can hear what you've tabbed as well. So I find it, it's much much easier to record that way. So I'm just going to load up my VSC that I was talking about. It's called DVS Guitar. You can find it on, uh, I found it on Google. Uh, just Google DVS Guitar VST. It's free VST. I forget where I found it exactly, but uh, like it doesn't sound great, but you don't need it to sound great. You just need to hear your notes and stuff. So I'll just show you what it sounds like just, uh, to give you an idea. So yeah, that's what it sounds like. And this is how you load your... Um, drum tracks and whatnot in Guitar Pro. Or, no, I mean Reaper. Now we're going to close Reaper and we're going to go to Cubase 5. And just close this. Open Cubase. Alright, so I'm just going to open a new project uh, here. New project. Empty. Choose for my friends. Alright, now your thing here is empty in Cubase. You're going to go to File import MIDI file and just go ahead and ask him to create a new project again and we're going to choose the same MIDI files earlier open and then choose for my friends because you guys are my friends and I love you alright now once this is opened uh, in Cubase like the cool thing about Cubase is that there is a uh, kind of like a DVS guitar implemented in it already but it's not DVS guitar I just don't remember what the uh, what it's called and there's one for the synth as well as it's called Hallian one for the synth but for the guitar I'm not sure uh, so anyways let's just skip to the to the drum part uh, okay so first off Okay, so apparently when I hit F3, my thing stops recording. So anyways, what the first thing you want to do in Cubase is uh, you want to hit F3 so that your mixer at the bottom is going to show up, this window here. And then what, you, what you're going to want to do is, I don't know, just move your drums because once again they're just going to take up all the whole space. And uh, then once that is done you're going to hit F11 and it's going to bring up the VST instruments window and uh, what you're going to do here is click on no instrument and select superior drummer and then it's going to ask you to create a new MIDI track and you select yes now here what you do is the same thing as in Reaper you go to mixer right click out one and select multi-channel then as you see the output line changes completely then you close this and <coughs> to the left of Superior Drummer, you're going to see the last icon uh, before Superior Drummer. It kind of looks like a square with an arrow to the right or a house to uh, turn on its side. You're going to select this and then click Activate All Outputs and then that's going to do this here. All of your, uh, all of your kit parts do their each own independent track. You can close this. Now the thing is about Cubase 5 is that I haven't been using it for that long so I don't know everything there is to know about it. So for uh, for my drum tracks what I do is 
I just drag my I put my snap on first and then I drag my actual drum track that I tabbed onto the superior two drum track so that I can play because yeah I don't know how to make it work otherwise uh, <laughs> and then so here you can just go ahead and delete your unused drum track that has nothing in it you remove selected tracks and the cool thing about um, Cubase is that you can just click this folder here so it doesn't take up much clutter on the on your screen and now it'll just sound just like in Reaper where you can hear your uh, your drums and it sounds it's pretty much the same and once again like in Reaper I don't well, not in Reaper, but I just don't like the default uh, superior to drum sound, so I just trigger them with a uh, drumagog here again by clicking this little E, which stands for effects. This is the kick, by the way, and just go ahead and choose drumagog, and then Steam Slate Library, kick one, and that's it. Anyways, and then here at the bottom, you can just rename them again, just like in Reaper. Snare. Snare room. Hyatt. Toms. Overheads one. And overheads two. Yep. Yeah. So uh, that's how it's done in uh, Cubase. Only problem is these unused tracks 7, 8, 10, 11, all the way up to 16. I don't know how to remove them because like I said I haven't been using Cubase long enough to know and so yeah that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions just ask me and, or below in the comment section and I will try to respond to you as best I can and uh, if you guys like uh, melodic genty music um, you can check out my band on Facebook it's uh, facebook.com slash we are illusionists or soundcloud.com slash illusionists so this again is Larcher from sevenstring.org and I hope you found this tutorial helpful and uh, yeah that's pretty much it See